So today I have a different kind of video for you, not actually so much about business, finance or investing, but nonetheless, I think something super important if you want to excel in any of those areas. And that actually is choosing your task manager. Hey, we're in 2022. I thought by now everybody has some kind of digital task manager, but I was shocked recently when I was at the event and gave a speech and I asked the audience to raise their hand if they're using a digital task manager. And the minority of people in the room actually raised their hand, meaning majority of people just scribble their tasks down. They're using post-it notes or some kind of diary or calendar offline where they write it down, see it, and that's all. Which, fair enough, a couple of years ago may have been good enough. However, now that we're working from anywhere remotely while traveling, while in the car, you want to have the information with you. If you forget your book, you basically don't remember your tasks or what you have to do. Plus the fact of collaboration. Now with modern task managers, you can quickly collaborate, delegate to other users who are also part of the platform. So there are so many benefits to using an online digital task manager, let alone that I can use it cross-platform on my phone, on my laptop, on my iPad, what have you, and ideally cross-platform, not just Apple, but also with Microsoft devices. So, I mean, you know, you really wanna make sure that you have a task manager of choice and not just choose one, but then actually start using it. For me, I couldn't live or function without a task manager. And I can honestly tell you, I probably tried way too many it might be a little obsession of mine. I change probably every six months or so the task manager, but at the same time, I feel like getting closer to the one I really love. And I'm gonna share with you in the video, which is my favorite one. Plus give you a few other options that you may choose from depending on which platform you're using and what may appeal to you. Before we get started, do you know why Karen pressed Control Alt Delete on the keyboard? Because she insisted on seeing the task manager. <laughs> Right, so the first one we're gonna be looking at is called Tick Tick. Not to confuse with Tick Tock. That's something else. So we're looking at Tick Tick. One of the most famous tech YouTubers, MKHD, actually says this is his favorite task manager and certainly has a lot going for it. It's very clean, very minimal, and at the same time offers a lot of flexibility and various ways how you can customize it to your liking. So I really enjoyed uh, the app actually. It does a lot and um, yeah, very straightforward if you want it to be. But at the same time, you can really add a lot of functionality, voice input, and you can turn your emails into tasks, which is something a lot of the task managers do. Plus it interacts with Siri and other voice commands. So it definitely offers a lot of opportunities to really track your tasks, schedule them, follow up, and I like that it works cross-platform. It works for Android, it works for Apple, because you don't want to be stuck to only one operating system in case you switch it in the future. So that's good that they're cross-platform. They also have a Pomodoro timer, which is very nice. If you're working on the task, you can have a certain countdown for the specific task. So that's proven to be very productive. And uh, yeah, you can collaborate with a lot of other users as well, which is great. So overall, definitely a very, very good app to use. That's the free version. That's also a paid version. And uh, that costs actually $28 a year, which you know you might argue is fairly reasonable. But then again, I'm not a big fan of subscription task managers. I would like to pay once, or ideally not at all, and just use it. And uh, you can use the free version, but it comes with a lot of limitations in terms of space and so on, with how many people you can collaborate, how much you can upload, etc. So you fairly quickly feel the limitations and they're kind of pushing you towards upgrading. And um, yeah, obviously, once you upgrade, it does offer a significantly more. But for me, as I said, I prefer one-off or free version. Next up, we have Todoist. And that's probably also one of the most popular task managers out there. And you can see a very clean interface, well-organized, and I really quite enjoy using it. Once again, cross-platform, which I really enjoyed, uh, on the phone, Android, Apple, what have you, to collaborate with others and see your projects at a glance. And yeah, quite enjoyed it. Quick add function, which is very important because some of the task managers make it very difficult to actually add a task. And you want this to be as easy and seamless as possible. So I quite like that it's very simple to do, plus prioritization, because that's also important. If you follow the getting things done method, then you wanna prioritize your task, right? If they're all basically at the same level, then you might get over overwhelmed the more tasks you have after all you don't know what to focus on and start first so that's very important and actually quite well done in Todoist as I said before you can easily delegate and collaborate with other people and I also like you can change the views for example as you can see here you can have Kanban boards and I come to this in another app that's very famous for Kanban boards where you basically move your tasks from left to right through various stages and that makes things much more visual and I quite like that view. Todoist has a free version but similar to TickTick you are actually limited to certain projects here only five you can only upload up to five megabytes I mean these days you take a picture with an iPhone which has seven eight megabytes so you're already limited there so definitely you quickly run into limitations with that very soon 
Then you can upgrade to pro or business, depending on how many team members you have and what you want. If you have a team, then probably it makes sense to upgrade and then pay for every single additional team member. So definitely a very solid option, especially if you don't mind paying a small monthly subscription fee. Next up, we have Microsoft To Do. Now that used to be called Wunderlist and was actually my favorite task manager for many, many years. It was an independent company from Germany, where I'm from. So I really supported these guys. And uh, yeah, they've been recently bought up by Microsoft. And since then, they rebranded to To Do. Well, I used it for a while and the app really works extremely seamlessly, very smooth, really did everything I wanted to do. It's more simplistic. You can't do too many project managements and tasks, etc. But what it says it does, it does it extremely well, syncs very fast, and I was very impressed using it. The only thing here why I changed, honestly, it might sound ridiculous. I'm just not a big Microsoft fan. It really pushes you to have a Microsoft Outlook email address, and of course, to use the Microsoft 365 suite. You can click over here to see the plans and pricing. Now you don't have to pay to use it, it's completely free. But of course, naturally, they want to push you into any of those uh, subscriptions, which give you access to Word, Excel, etc. So if you're a Microsoft user, that can be an amazing tool. It does what it's supposed to do extremely well. I'm just not a Microsoft fan, nor do I like particularly the Microsoft design and look and feel. But if you are, then that's absolutely the best choice if you want a simple, straightforward task manager. Next up, we have Trello. And Trello is something I've also used for quite a while, and I really enjoy the logic to it. Basically, it's built around a Kanban board. As you can see over here, that's usually how it looks. You can have different projects, and then depending on what your headings are, but for example, to-do, that's your to-do list, which you start, you have a couple of them over here. Then if you started them, you would move the board from left to right. So you would move one of the cards into doing. So you start working on it. Once again, you can see here with whom you're collaborating, etc. And once the task is completed, you or your team member can move it to the right to done and then you can archive it. It's a nice visual representation of how you're moving through your various tasks and projects. So I really, really enjoyed it. And as you can see, quite a number of big companies are using Trello. So it's really, really good and powerful. And it has a lot of integration with different apps, etc. So I really, really enjoyed using it. Now they have something called Power Apps, which basically are plugins and that you can add to your Trello, like Slack, etc., Google Calendar Sync. Some of them are free, some of them are paid. I haven't used too many, but if you want, they are there and that's really nice that you can naturally grow as as you grow, your business grows, you can grow together with Trello. Trello is also subscription based. They do, however, have a free option. And actually I've been using the free one for more than a year and I really enjoyed it because it gives you unlimited cards and a lot of options, more than actually some of the previous task managers we've seen. And then of course, if you want to upgrade and want uh, team members, etc., you can upgrade. And I think the cost is quite reasonable. It's also cross-platform, works on Android, iOS. They have a Mac app, Windows app. So definitely it's a very universal tool and I definitely recommend to check it out. Next up, we have Notion. And probably if you've been around YouTube, you have come across Notion because most of the successful productivity YouTubers, they keep on talking about Notion for good reason. Notion can basically become your live OS, your live operating system. I mean, it has so many tools and functions and features. There are YouTube channels just dedicated towards explaining Notion because it can be completely customized, which is amazing if you're into this kind of things. However, at the same time, it can be a little bit overwhelming. Now to set up your own task manager can be easy. However, to get it really right, it does take a while and I prefer using templates and there are amazing templates out there. Some of them are free, some of them are paid, but once you have them, you can simply just start using them. You can see over here, see all templates. You would click it over here. You say task manager, it pulls it up and then you have all different task managers, etc. what you need. Ultimate task manager, for example, you can see the template and it will open it and then you can have a look. Okay, do I like something like this, etc. The views, super, super customizable. I could basically try the Notion and it would populate it into my own Notion, which I'm using myself already. Thomas Frank is one of the most famous YouTubers talking about Notion and you can see here the various options it has. So the great thing with Notion, you can build it into anything you really want. On the flip side though, you really have to spend time to understand it, etc. For me, it took really a long time to get it and I tried a few times and I always quit after a short time. Now I use it mostly for YouTube because there I have all my various Kanban boards, which projects I'm working on, ideas, the status, the sponsorships, etc. So it's all kind of streamlined. So it really becomes a huge database for future videos, for past videos to reference. And it really helps me with that. For task management, I found a little bit overwhelming and not exactly as intuitive and streamlined and visually pleasing 
as some other task managers. It can absolutely do it, but I found for myself a better solution. But if you want an all-in-one solution, then Lotion can really be your best choice. For the pricing, they also have the free option. And once again, I've been using it for over a year now, and I always use the free option and never run into any issues. However, if you want to be a power user or start involving your team members, then definitely want to upgrade to the personal pro or the team plan, which once again is quite reasonable for what it can offer. And lastly, we have my favorite tool, which I've been obsessed with for the last few weeks, and that's called Things. Things is the only one applicable for only Apple users. So unfortunately, not for Android or Microsoft, so sorry for that. But if you're using an Apple, then honestly speaking, there's no better task manager than Things. I've been using it now for a couple of weeks and I absolutely love it. It's such a breeze, such a pleasure, such a joy to use. I see myself using it way more than any other task manager before. They have a beautiful widget, so at the top of my iPhone, I can see at a glance very quickly all my tasks I have to do for the day. And it's super, super simple to add tasks. I can use it through Siri. While in the shower, I come up with a thought, I'll say to Siri and it adds it to my things list. And from there, I can very simply categorize it into my different areas, into different projects. And it's just a breeze and joy to use. Now, sadly, they don't have a free version and you have to pay separately for the different apps on the different platforms. And it probably makes sense to use it cross-platform. For the Mac, it's $50, not cheap, I understand. Of course, you wanna have it on your phone and on your watch. If you have one, that's gonna be only $10, which is very reasonable. Plus on your iPad, it's gonna be $20. Now, altogether, you're looking at around $80. I understand that might be a lot, but if you compare it to some of the subscription models, those start adding up after years as well. And this one has been up for a couple of years already. So actually you'll be cheaper off by using it for so many years rather than paying subscription every single month. And if you want me to, I can actually make a deep dive into things and how I use it for myself to show you really all the benefits it has to offer. But honestly speaking, you can trust me. After using so many task managers, if you're into the Apple ecosystem, there's no better and more beautiful looking task manager out there and it's well worth the money. Now, of course, these are just a handful of task managers. There are way more Asana, OmniFocus, MeisterTask, Clear, Google Task, and Apple Reminders. Ultimately, it really doesn't matter which one you choose. I think it's very important that you choose one and start working with it because it's nice to sign up you feel productive you put your first few tasks and it just sits there and you start forgetting about it the whole point of a task manager is that you start looking at it in the morning and you start prioritizing work with it throughout the day and in the evening review what you have accomplished and those tasks you haven't done move them to the next day and then also at the end of the week kind of plan your next week because that's very important a lot of people just go day by day have a weekly review that's super important and once again if that's something you're interested in i could do another video about this as well so yeah you might think why the heck are we talking about task managing but i think if you can't manage to stay on top of your tasks projects and time management, you're definitely also going to run into issues when it comes to business, investing and all things money. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please give a like, subscribe to the channel. I've also launched a YouTube members channel. So if you want to subscribe, then click the join button. Really means the world to me. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay healthy, get wealthy and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.